It's December 11th, 2022, and a warm one it is. It's not sunny or anything, it's overcast. However, uh, it's zero degrees. Uh, you can tell the snow is very uh, dense and kind of kind of soft and crunchy sort of thing. It's uh, perfect, perfect snowball weather. We don't get perfect snowball weather very often. It's uh, usually too cold and the snow is very dry. Um, when, uh, you know, when you decide to have a snowball fight or something, it really doesn't work very well. So today, uh, you know, being Sunday, try not to get involved in too much. I, I puttered in the shop a little bit. Um, I actually went out to my trailer, mounted that new tire. I videoed that, but my audio didn't work out. So sorry about that. And, uh, we, uh, Saturday, we had a good day of rest too. We kind of took it easy in the, in the morning and afternoon, did a few things around the house. And then in the evening, we had a really, really nice evening. Uh, we visited with, with Ian and Sandy all evening, uh, went into the city, we had supper together and that was really, really nice to catch up. And I don't get to see him really that often. We're probably 150 miles apart. Uh, I talk to him regularly, but I don't get to see him that often. And it's nice to see Sandy too. She's always pleasant to visit with. We're, Sandy and I were, <laughs> we're uh, exchanging uh, pie and, and, and bread baking recipes at one point. It was kind of funny. So anyway, uh, that was really fun. Had a really, really nice meal. And uh, today, I hope to have a really nice meal too, but I got to do the cooking. So you might hear that. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but uh, I've got the got the Barbie stoked up here in the middle of winter. Let's see what's going on. It's getting kind of hot, so we got some we got some garlic mushrooms going on in the corner here. We got some nice uh, steaks. I don't remember what cut of steak that is, but it looks like it's time for me to turn those over. Uh, looks like it was time to turn them over a few minutes ago. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to do that before I burn uh, Carol's steak and then I'll be mud <laughs> after that. Uh, so anyway, we'll get into the shop again tomorrow and I've got another project kind of lined up and uh, show you all about that. And then hopefully make some, make some headway, some more headway in the shop, which would be really great. And uh, so, yeah, that's the weekend. It's uh, been a really great weekend and the weather has been, it, it's been overcast, but it's been warm. So that's a nice break. Anyway, take care. There's my wife. <laughs> I can't tell if she was waving or giving me the finger, but <laughs> she was there. Uh, so uh, have a great day. Take care and have fun. It's Monday, December 12th. 2022 and today is just uh, working in the shop again day I've been doing my best to clean up um, that's a never-ending task it seems and sometimes I don't know if I'm spinning my wheels or making progress or not but I'm busy <laughs> yeah, I can say that for sure my next shop project is involving this cabinet and and this cabinet is standing on on its end. It's rather long. It's 70, 74, I think, inches long. Um, and I was given that cabinet. Uh, it, it's, it's a little bit rough. It's not uh, a cabinet. It's actually kind of a nice cabinet, but it's kind of beyond where you want to have it in your living room sort of thing. Uh, the base is broken and you can tell it's gotten wet a bit and it's press board, so that gets wet kind of kind of falls apart. And so what's going to happen here is I've spent most of the day finding my radial arm saw and I'm going to take the radial arm saw off of this, this stand that it's on. Uh, that's very inefficient. It uses a lot of space here and there's not really anything I can do with that space. So I'm going to take that stand off the radial arm saw and I'll put the radial arm saw on that cabinet. In order to do that, I need to build a new base for the cabinet and then I'm going to have to build a, a little bit of a base between the cabinet and the radial arm saw to get it back up to my standard 38 inch high work surface. 
suffice to say, that's about all that's been happening. I'm trying to clean up the shop, trying to trying to find it. This radio arm saw was stacked right up with stuff, and I've found places for most of it. Some of it I threw thrown away. Some of it I put on my new shelves, uh, maybe permanently or not as permanently. But regardless, making progress here. See, I've got a bunch of crap in the corner here that can't stay there, but it was it was tucked in behind the radio arm saw. I actually took my dust collector and I sucked up all the, the sawdust that I had produced last last winter in this uh, in this area. It's a beautiful day. Um, again, it hasn't been real sunny, but it's warm. It's zero minus one. Uh, the barn fan is going crazy. It's it's holding temperature in there, so the bees are okay. And uh, it, it's uh, the forecast is looking like it's going to be this temperature kind of all week. Next week, a little bit cooler, which is you know good for the bees. It's good for the roads too. It gets really slippery out here when when it gets warm. But something else I have to show you. I got my new dust collector canister filter and plastic bag and I put that on yesterday. I was going to video that but I really needed to do it and my microphones are all out of battery power so I couldn't do anything like that. Yeah, so there's there's not much to see really. There's just some screws at the bottom and it lifts right off. Uh, the part that I kind of did want to show you is you'll notice this handle here. Uh, this is a handle that you can rotate 360 degrees around the filter. And uh, it looks like that's hooked to the filter, but that's the roll bar on the tractor. So don't let that throw you. And what happens is this is a pleated filter. And there's some, there's some uh, wipers inside there, kind of opposite each other. And you pull that handle and they go around inside the filter. And they just kind of catch the filter media a little bit and knock the very fine dust off them to, to regain that, uh, that airflow. I've been using it a bit in this configuration and it seems to me it's louder. I can kind of hear through that filter better. Um, and I believe that it's uh, moving a lot more air uh, and having a lot less restriction uh, in, in this area. So the bag that was there I think would cause a lot more restriction and ironically the bag didn't filter down to as fine a particle as this canister does. So that that canister filter is uh, costs half as much as that dust collector does brand new. So it was a little bit of a tough choice but if I'm going to buy a dust collector uh, I'm going to get a bigger one. So I didn't want to go ahead and just buy this one over again. There's no there's no point. So anyway it's a lot better dust collector now I had to change the bottom bag to a plastic bag so that again it's not porous and able to blow air out through the bottom bag uh, which is made of the same stuff as the top bag. Uh, and now I can more easily see how much debris is in my dust collector bag. If I see very much going into it then I can tell that my my uh, separator here is, is, is getting full because as it gets full the wood chips start just making the circle and going back up into the dust collector. And so anyway, happy about that. Uh, really uh, pleased that I pulled the trigger and, and made that change. That's going to make a big, big difference. So again, that's just today and uh, I wish you well and have a great day, have fun, and we'll talk to you again tomorrow, Lord willing. It's Tuesday, December 13th, 2022. Um, getting out a little bit earlier than I often do but it's light out so you can you can tell it's not really that early uh, however I've been out for a while loading the truck I got a call from a store uh, last evening and they're kind of desperate for some honey so I'm more than happy to accommodate and so I'm heading up there it's uh, about a half hour drive away down the highway it's a pretty easy shot but uh, you know it still takes some time that's that's good that's one of my favorite stores they're really nice people and uh, I just uh, really enjoy going there and they sell sell quite a bit of product uh, not my highest sales store but pretty good they, they really are excited about the product and that's what I like you know I've had some stores in the past you yeah, service them for a while and they just they just don't seem too excited about the product they don't care if you're there or not and uh, 
sometimes I just stop going because you know you want to deal with people who are happy happy that you're there so yesterday I made out pretty good on that radio alarm saw uh, stand that cabinet so I've got it setting up there right now I need to bolt it down still uh, so you'll see that video come out soon hopefully you'll you'll watch it and catch up on the details so I hope to hit the wood shop again when I get back from my store visit this shouldn't take me more than a couple hours so I'll be in the wood shop probably before noon today so anyway uh, that's all the update for today and uh, take care and have fun it's Wednesday December 14th 2022 and we are experiencing one of our favorite types of weather systems and that is called the Colorado low remember those three big systems that came through here in April and just about destroyed our beekeeping season well we get more of that this one's a little different um, we're not in the eye of it it's kind of going through uh, North Dakota Minnesota but we're getting that wraparound effect uh, from it and still still quite a bit of snow going to come down and it's going to last a long time they say a good three days this is going to last uh, I, I don't think we're going to get tons and tons of snow out of this and maybe not some wickedly high winds um, but definitely it's it's a problem uh, one of the biggest issues with a system like this uh, and you can't tell by looking at it is the temperature uh, it's not very cold it's only about minus one out here uh, so it, it's chilly because it's kind of humid but uh, it's not very cold and so that means any anytime you step on the snow you drive on the snow uh, it just turns into ice right away uh, so you can imagine what that does for um, what that does for uh, driving conditions on the highways and the streets and lucky me I'm headed to Winnipeg <laughs> tomorrow for deliveries. Uh, I am lucky. I've got a lot of really good orders to deliver tomorrow. However, not so lucky that it's uh, it's snowing and got weather like this. So it is what it is. It will be what it will be. I'm just kind of working in the shop today. Um, kind of getting a little bit stalled on my latest project, but I'll catch up on what's happening there. So this is the latest project and it's kind of just sitting here it's not bolted together yet that's one of my problems is i need to buy some four inch bolts to bolt this down and this tabletop is just sitting here i'm not sure i'll use this one a uh, friend has a longer tabletop that he's going to give me so i'll see if that's appropriate for here if it is great if it's not then plan b is this four foot uh, i prefer a six foot in here because that would cover almost the entire uh, cabinet. The cabinet is 74 inches. So, of course, 6 feet 72. Got myself a little note here. Don't be leaning on this. <laughs> It'll fall on the floor and probably on my feet. Um, so I got the, the base built for the cabinet. I had to put a little shim in the back. I don't know if you can even see that. Uh, when I pushed it up against the wall, it wasn't kind of flush. Uh, I, I want it to be kind of hugging the wall so that so that sawdust doesn't go down in there. Um, that may or may not really be much of an issue. I'm just sitting at the computer right now doing some SketchUp uh, for some cabinets. I want to use this space in here. Uh, there's about seven and a half inches here. Uh, so I'm going to build a box for here and I'm going to put a drawer in it. And it'll be this deep, so it'll come right out to the face of this this uh, tabletop. So I have a nice deep drawer here uh, that I can access easily. The problem is then I'm going to have have something this low, uh, this far out. So those drawers are going to be harder to access. And and yeah, I'm going to put drawers in there. I'll likely put a tray in the bottom and uh, put a you know so that i can put a tote on there uh, and i am planning to install a divider here that will uh, give the saw more structural rigidity the, the tabletop structural rigidity to support the saw yeah so there will be four 
there be four uh, openings there. And I can fit, like I say, I can fit the trays with the totes and then uh, there's not vertical space enough for two totes. So I'll put two more drawers above that. Uh, so that should, that should work out. Lots of drawers. Drawer slides are expensive though. That's kind of, you know, the downside. But going to town tomorrow, plan to hit up Lee Valley for some drawer slides. I'm actually going to Lee Valley for something different. Um, and I'll show you when I put it together. But I'll give you a hint now. Um, it's a Craig fence system that gives me... Uh, give me a measuring tape like my table saw has so that I can uh, measure my pieces uh, right on the the fence instead of measuring out with measuring tape every time and then it also has stop blocks that I can put down uh, in order to repeat cuts uh, because I do hundreds of repeating cuts on there uh, every year so that'll speed things up and make things a lot easier it's kind of hard to see but uh, these wheels here, these wheels are really nice wheels. It's, it's uh, a Rockler wheel, and it has a flip-down system. So you can just push the wheel right down, and it lifts the furniture up, and you can move it around. However, this bench is now far too heavy for these wheels. It's not rated for that much weight. So what I plan to do is I'll take those wheels off the workbench, and I'm going to put them on that radial arm saw cabinet. From this angle, you can kind of see better why I want to do that. Uh, it's because I cut long material and there's a support right here. It's got a bunch of crap laying on it, but there's a support right here. So when I cut long material, I can bring it in through the overhead door across the radial arm saw and, and cut it up and just keep pulling it in. Um, and with the radial arm saw pushed back against the wall like that, uh, I can't do that. Um, so I need to pull it out. Uh, so I was thinking, you know, those wheels, I can put the wheels down and push it in, you know, leave it sitting on the wheels perhaps. And then when I'm wanting to use it, I can pull it out, drop it to the floor so it's stable and then, and then cut my material. So I'm going to try that anyway, and we'll see how that works. Yeah, so today has just been getting orders ready for deliveries tomorrow. Um, <laughs> I get, you know, I'll plan a trip. This is this is how it goes. Every day I'm getting orders, and I'm not complaining. I'm just saying how kind of it's kind of weird, uh, and and it's something that I've had to really get accustomed to expecting. Um, I'll plan, you know, perhaps a week in advance. I'll have some reason I need to go into Winnipeg for. Uh, or on a particular day and so I'll decide okay I'll put that on my calendar that's my day and I'll have that thing and then maybe one other thing or two and then you know as the days go by <laughs> it's like I'm getting emails I'm getting phone calls I'm getting people and before you know it I've got 15 stops to make uh, that day not complaining don't get me wrong um but, uh, you know, it does make it a little challenging to plan because some things you can't just show up any time. Sometimes places are not open certain hours uh, or whatever. Uh, so, uh, and, and that's particularly why I do not guarantee delivery times for my free delivery, on uh, my free delivery model. Uh, you want free delivery, you get delivery when I come. <laughs> that's uh, the end of the story. Uh, so you either have to be there, have a safe drop or whatever. Uh, but anyway, uh, it's it's a real blessing though to uh, to have have that happen. You have to go to Winnipeg, and then you get a whole whack of orders, and so I'm constantly filling the truck with stuff I have to take. Uh, so I've got my orders ready so far. <laughs> I just came in from adding one to it because the guy emailed me. Ah, I want a bunch of honey, so uh, that's that's nice to have another. It makes for a really busy day, and, uh, and I'm getting anxious with this weather because it, it, tomorrow might be pretty terrible uh, getting around. I've got a good truck, a four-wheel drive if I need it. Uh, my new tires are spectacular. I love those new tires, uh, you know, the way they perform in the snow and ice. So, 
you know, I'm, I'm just getting old. I used to, you know, when I was young, it used to be, oh, we get to drive in the snow. That's all a lot of fun. And it's challenging and all sort of thing. I don't relish that kind of challenge these days. I'd rather have nice, clear, clean, dry roads. <laughs> I'm just getting old. The shop still needs to be cleaned up. Uh, getting there because I've got more storage options now. Um, I do want to pick up more totes so I can use my shelves to their maximum capacity. And that's about it. So still, still working on the shop, get some things put together, and I hope to hit the production soon after New Year's Day as quick as possible. I uh, hope to have the shop whipped into shape by then and uh, ready to ready to do some production work. So that's about it for today. And uh, hopefully I'll talk to you tomorrow. Uh, but again, delivery's tomorrow, so not going to be much to see. Thanks for watching. You have a great day and take care and have fun. It's Friday, December 16th, 2022. Uh, so yesterday was my day into Winnipeg, and uh, I was really uh, anxious about that trip because there were a lot of stops to make. I made probably 15 to 17 stops, something like that, and uh, we're in the middle of a, a multi-day Colorado low influence here. The low is uh, sitting over, mostly over the Dakotas and Minnesota, so we're kind of just getting the edge of it and it hasn't been really all that bad. Uh, we've gotten quite a bit of snow last night, and they say today and, and into tomorrow we get some, and the wind has come up today, and it's gotten colder. A really heavy north wind, uh, 30 kilometers an hour, and uh, uh, was it minus five, minus seven, something like that. Whereas yesterday, it was actually a pretty pleasant day, it was uh, hovering between 1 and minus 1, uh, which is bad because then you get ice on the roads uh, around that freezing temperature. Uh, but the roads were actually not that bad. Uh, I'm, I'm very, very thankful for the new tires on my truck. Uh, any, any side streets I had to drive on, I had a clicker four-wheel drive because there was, there was a good six inches of snow uh, on the side streets that I had to dig through. And that little truck just dug right through no problem it, it sticks to the road and it uh, digs through the snow so that worked out really well uh, my anxiety about that was um, I won't say unfounded but it didn't turn out to be as bad as I thought it might be uh, it was it was good good to be a little anxious because then you know you watch your p's and q's you just slow down a bit uh, definitely we're driving slower than normal um, you know, 100 kilometers an hour on the highway, which is, you know, for miles people, it's uh, 162 miles per hour. Um, we were we were running 70 to 80 kilometers an hour, which you're looking at, you know, the 40, 40 mile an hour range kind of thing. So definitely slower on the highway. So enough about the weather. Uh, a couple of my stops yesterday had to do with the shop. So I picked up some stuff uh, to hopefully make the shop uh, a little nicer as far as storage goes and production uh, as well. So I'll show you those things here. I did go to Lee Valley, but I did not buy drawer slides at Lee Valley. Uh, I went to my local Princess Auto store and I picked up some Powerfist drawer slides. Uh, I've used them before. I was using them on those 28-inch uh, trays that I put together and they seem to be good they they were a full they, these are actually on sale so they were a full ten dollars cheaper than what uh, Lee Valley was selling for a 20 inch slide there's a 21 inch deep opening so I put a 20 20 inch slide in there so I got eight because this cabinet I want to divide these two sections into two so I'll have four sections and then I want to put a drawer at the bottom uh, that will perhaps take a one of my 53 liter totes and then a drawer at the top that's not as deep uh, so that's uh, four compartments with two drawers each that's eight so I had to buy eight slides and I was glad to see they're on sale uh, save some money because they're they're expensive even on sale that was uh, 
was that 13 14 dollars 14 dollars a piece uh even on sale they were 20 uh 23 24 at lee valley but they weren't on sale so also i got my got my rip blade back nicely sharpened it's got the the wax on it still which i'll leave that wax on until i use it uh, so that's really great and yeah my, my recollection was right that was uh, 20 bucks uh, just under 20 bucks is 19 something to sharpen that blade uh, so that's really nice because that's about a i don't know that maybe is a 60 dollar blade uh, most of my blades are between you know 60 and 80 dollars new so this was the big purchase here this is a craig track and stop system so what i want to do with this is i want to when i build my fence on my radial arm saw this is a, a track that sits on top of the fence. So if you think of this, if you think of this box as the fence that, that I'm pushing my material up against and the saw is gonna run through, uh, then this, uh, this track mounts to the top of the fence. It has a, a integrated measuring tape on there that I uh, will calibrate right up to my blade. And then it has two uh, movable stop um, systems on there with a with a, a hair guide for the for the measuring tape uh, it'll be a lot like the table saw in that way so I can dial that right in no more measuring against my blade I should be able to move my stop out set it set the uh, the hair guide on the on the measure and uh, then cut my pieces uh, it's got two two styles of stops so you can see kind of here the picture of how it's set up uh, so these these move along and then they tighten down so you can put your material right against that stop and then cut and this is a they call it a production stop it's a fixed stop you set that there and it, it stays there this one is they call it a flip stop so what happens is if you're cutting maybe uh, two size of uh, pieces uh, in production you can set this one for the long one and you can set this one for the short one and then this one you can either just lift it to flip it up out of the way or you can press your stock in this direction and because it's curved it just lifts up uh, like that so it's handy for uh, often you'll have a, a piece maybe you'll have a lot of times when I do reclaim lumber and or lumber that you don't know maybe it isn't quite square or whatever um, if I want to cut it, say, 20 inches, and it's 22 inches or, you know, whatever, 30 inches, I can take that piece, slide it under here, square the end, and then pull it out, and then push it against the stop and cut it uh, to length without, without actually ever touching the stop. This is primarily made for a, a miter saw, a lot like my sliding compound miter saw that I have, but I'm going to try and use it on my radial arm saw because this is a kind of a fixed um, a fixed machine in my shop the sliding compound miter saw is on a, a mobile stand which is not as nice to work on when you're doing production work uh, so anyway that's that'll be that'll be installed here at some point but i need to i need to get the other table from my buddy decide which table i'm using either this one or the other one and, uh, and then i can put all that together after the deliveries I was uh, early enough I had enough time and I had planned to have dinner with a friend so we had a really nice dinner together uh, it was, I mean it was a good meal but it was really nice to spend time with him I really appreciate his friendship so that's about that's about my Thursday uh, so Friday huh, it's not as nice a day as I was mentioning so I had to go out, unload the truck, squirrel things away. Uh, I had the tractor out clearing snow. It is so windy out. It's not really cold. If you stay out of the wind, it's not that cold. But you get in the wind, boy, it is really cold. And of course, get the snowblower going, and the first thing that happens if you, is you get covered in snow. So now you're cold, and then you're wet pretty soon, so then you're really cold. Yeah, the joys of a snowblower on an open station tractor. I'm not complaining, I love my tractor, but that's the reality. <laughs> that's what happens. Um, so I'm finally back in the shop. 
after, you know, a day and some away. This is where my Wednesday ended. I, I had a whole pile of crap on my table saw here, and a lot of it was, was thin pieces, little thin strips. So I took the time, and I, uh, I just ripped everything half inch thick on the table saw. Then I wrapped up the whole bundle. I'll set this aside, uh, and then when I go to build covers, I've got some some thin strips to use for the shim under the cover because that's half inch when I build those. So that helped clean up a lot and it produced more junk than it produced parts. <laughs> but at least at least it's uh, not on the table saw anymore. I actually have a neighbor who um, heats, I don't know if he heats his house, but he heats his, his shop or his garage with a wood stove. And uh, so I just message him once in a while, say, "Hey, come over," <laughs> and he comes and gets this this bin of uh, this bin of wood, uh, and it's it you know it's good. It's mostly kindling, uh, so he appreciates that to get his fire started. I was even cutting up some. I think this is mahogany. I'm not sure, but I think it's mahogany. I just had this big ugly chunk of this here. And uh, so I cut it up. Some of these parts, are the dark parts, are actually what I believe to be mahogany. I thought I had a big idea and uh, could use these drawer, or these doors, since I'm going with drawers on that cabinet. You can do drawers and doors, uh, but it's mostly aesthetic. It partly helps keep the dust out of the drawers. Um, but if I put fronts on the drawers, uh, that'll perform the same task. So I don't need the four doors that came off. And I thought, oh, I'll just use a door to make a divider because I need to make dividers for these two sections. I thought, well, I'll just use a door. I'll put the door in there. Now the problem is they've, they've uh, thwarted that plan because they made this kind of a handle on top. And the space I need to fill is about that high and so I end up with a compromised edge on the top so I can't do that uh, so I think what's going to happen with these doors is they're going to become either drawer bottoms or drawer cut them up for drawer sides something like that so I'll definitely repurpose these uh, for things like that which you know <laughs> the price of lumber you need to use it efficiently and I don't have I don't have a pile of plywood that's appropriate for doing this kind of thing I've got a little bit a little bit of that oak left which probably will be used for the dividers I'll have to measure it up see if it's tall enough uh, so that's the that's the plan in the shop today just to tinker with this and maybe get a couple of drawer glides mounted or get some trays built or something get some parts cut at least uh, we'll work on that. So thanks for watching this week and uh, you have a really great weekend and take care and have fun. I'll give you a little view of, of what I ended up with on uh, Wednesday and that's this. Oh my. It came out. <laughs> I had two contact lenses in my eye. One folded up and I couldn't find it, so I put another one in. And yeah, that's why my eye's all red. Oh dear. Okay, that was getting old anyway. Go in the garbage. <laughs>